hard to believe that uh, it was only a year ago, really, that we were up in Arctic Bay celebrating um, the conclusion and announcement of Tariyu Dibumanga and the hard work that um, preceded all of that. And uh, those are the types of things that we really have to celebrate. Uh, also are, gives us guidance for what Inuit are trying to achieve especially when you're trying to mix the protection of the environment, um, the sustainability of our culture and our, our livelihoods and our communities in the face of climate change, but also then the, the need for infrastructure and the need for um, thriving communities in our own way uh, moving forward. And really that's what the uh, National Inuit Climate Change Strategy is all about, is finding that balance. <clears throat> Just to step back, um, Inuit Nunangat is the Inuit homeland in Canada, and uh, it's, it's great to hear that term being used by federal ministers, um, also just finding its way into the way in which we do business in a distinctions-based approach between First Nations, Inuit, and Métis, and it also reimagines Canada. I think this is the most important point and the reason why we've been so insistent on using this terminology because it encompasses 51 communities across um, five comprehensive land claim agreements that have been signed since 1975. Uh, it, is, it encompasses over 50% of Canada's coastline. A lot of the research we've been doing indicates that it's more along the lines of about 70% of Canada's coastline rather than closer to 50, and over 30% uh, of Canada's land mass. Uh, these, this, is, this is all area that is um, co-managed between Inuit, the federal government, and in many cases, provinces and territories. And in much of that, that space, Inuit have actually direct control uh, through land claim agreements and through the provisions and the, um, the waters and lands that are outlined within them. These are our inherent rights in, that are being exercised and they're also a starting point for working with Inuit to help create prosperity and support community and individual well-being throughout Inuit Nunangat. All of this debate and discussion in this country about UNDRIP and the, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and free prior, inform, uh, free prior and informed consent and the, the boogeyman of a veto, you just have to look to our comprehensive claim agreements to see a path forward and the path that we've already taken that really just um, expresses our self-determination and our decision-making and our ownership of these decisions in partnership with the government of Canada and with provinces and territories to see what a healthy implementation of UNDRIP can be across the country. All of this is a backdrop to this particular table um, and the decisions and conversations that need to be made, that need to be informed by the work that happens within the Inuit Canada table on clean growth and climate change. As Minister Wilkinson said, our homeland is warming at three times the rate of the global average. And we know our communities are among the most vulnerable to climate change. We live in coastal communities. We live in communities with aging infrastructure. Uh, we live on permafrost. We have uh, deep concerns about uh, water safety. Um, we have uh, deep concerns about uh, uh, severe climate events, weather events that just weren't really in the consideration of, uh, of priorities for Inuit um, even 15 or 20 years ago, the way that they are today. We're actively observing and adapting to coastal erosion uh, changing sea ice conditions and threats to our Arctic wildlife. It's compounded by the lack of basic infrastructure, which challenges our ability to adapt and to miti mitigate effects of a changing climate. As I would imagine all of you know that our communities are largely fly in, fly out, with the exception of Inuvik and Tuktoyaktuk, and are not connected to the North American power grid. And there's a, a currently a, a complete reliance on diesel fuel to power our communities. We have unique and distinct needs and priorities in addressing food insecurity, identifying and prioritizing strategic infrastructure investments, 
advancing cleaner en energy solutions that will power our communities and mobilize our knowledge. This particular table uh, with the commitment for myself, the prime minister and the minister of environment and climate change is to ensure that Inuit are full and effective partners in addressing climate change and advancing clean growth in Inuit Nunanga. The Inuit Canada table on clean growth and climate change provides a distinctions-based forum for Inuit and Canada to discuss and advance shared priorities on clean growth on clim and climate change across Inuit Nunangat. This process supports meaningful engagement of Inuit by bringing forward the views and perspectives of regional Inuit land claim organizations to intergovernmental processes. It's critical in any initiative in Inuit Nunangat to understand the unique views, needs, and perspectives of Inuit. Um, thinking about this from the very beginning and um, the, the first minister's meeting where um, this particular table was agreed upon, <clears throat> it was basically a consolation prize. Um, Inuit were not a part of the larger announcement which uh, focused on the federal government's relationship with provinces and territories. But um, Canada's commitment to work directly with Inuit is expressed through the uh, willingness to create this particular table. And it is my hope that the federal government will continue to take that perspective, that this is something that is direct from the prime minister and direct from the government, um, that is meant to be our answer to the relationship that the federal government has with provinces and territories in which PTs in many cases have not allowed for Inuit participation in the way that uh, we would hope. Since that particular day in Ottawa uh, with the first minister's meeting, there is one other significant development and that is uh, in June of 2019, Inuit launched the National Inuit Climate Change Strategy, which identifies common, common climate priorities in five strategic pillars across Inuit Nunangat. It's intended to provide guidance to partners on how to effectively advance national Inuit climate priorities and support the development of regionally focused Inuit climate change strategies across Inuit Nunangat. The uh, National Inuit Climate Change Strategy has shaped the framework for discussions today and it's good to see the strategy being actively utilized to shape and inform meaningful work on climate change. It's important also to just to pause on what you see in that strategy and what you don't as far as where the focus is and where the action is. It's about the relationship between Inuit and the land. It's also about how communities can um, be sustainable and be reactive to climate pressures and also the way in which our culture and, um, and our practices interact with the environment. So I've, I've been in certain rooms where people uh, are a bit confused about the focus on people and on communities in relation to strictly the, the environment. And we always say as Inuit that we are a part of the environment and our communities have to be healthy alongside with um, everything within the environment. And that's why we, focus so much on the five pillar areas that we did. Inuit communities are among the most vulnerable uh, to the ongoing and future effects of climate change. The work of this table will help support climate and clean growth actions and contribute to the overall health and well-being for Inuit and Inuit communities. Continuing to work through a distinctions-based approach which respects Inuit inherent rights and self-determination is the most effective way to make meaningful change on climate and clean growth priorities in Inuit Nunangat. The ongoing and future meetings of this table support implementation of the National Inuit Climate Change Strategy, the Pan-Canadian Framework, and working towards Canada's climate commitments. Looking forward, I encourage each and every one of you to learn about the National Inuit Climate Change Strategy, the climate change and clean growth priorities of each of the Inuit regions, and think about your role in planning, supporting, and implementing our shared work. It's great to see almost 50 people participating in this particular meeting. I look forward to hearing uh, um, the results of this meeting. And I thank each and every one of you for the commitment that you've shown to be here today to participate in this truly collaborative
Na comigo.